I'm starting with a process called cyanotype, which will allow me to print all of my 36 photos directly on the full sheet of Reed's BFK in Prussian blue. Since this video is about making the structure of the accordion, I won't detail how to make a cyanotype. Perhaps some future video will cover that. Start by folding the paper in half, both directions. I'll be dividing the sheet into sixths, and this is the best way to start. Using a bone folder to crease the folds really helps. Crease the folds in each direction. I'm measuring from the center folds, each third to the edge. This is much easier for the 30 inch length as each third measures five inches even. The 22 and a quarter inch length is a bit trickier as each third measures just under 3.71 inches. The bone folder comes in handy as a scoring device to help me find the fold lines. I'm very careful when lining up the ruler to accommodate the thickness of the bone folder. Accuracy is key. Once all the lines are scored, it's time to fold along the score line. Once again, fold in both directions. 
For this book, I'm ending up with 36 pages, all laid out in a grid. It may not be apparent in the video, but the orientation alternates for each row, switching top and bottom. Use the bone folder like a letter opener to tear alternating crease lines from one end all the way to the last intersection of each row, switching ends to start the tear. After the final tear, your book should have an even number of rows and an odd number of tears. For horizontal pages, tear along the long dimension. For vertical pages, tear along the short dimension. I've designed this book with this paper in mind to be a horizontal format. You should have a zigzagging pattern. It's time now to fold the book together. Starting with two rows, fold the horizontal fold that runs into the tear over. Then begin zigzag folding the pages together. Continue the process until the book pages are all stacked up. If you have done the job well, the edges of each page will line up nicely. The book is pretty springy. Pressing it for a couple of hours will solve that problem. I'm showing two types of presses, 
a homemade book press, and an antique cast iron nipping press, which is ideal if you can find one. If not, the homemade press works fine. Using the text block as a guide, measure the two cover boards and the spine piece and cut them out. The height is common among all three. The width for the front and back should be identical, whereas the width for the spine should be measured off of the spine of the text block. Don't compress the spine too much, but make sure to compress it some in order to measure it accurately. Ensure the grain of the boards lines up with the grain of the book cloth. Cut a piece of book cloth about 4 inches larger all around than the layout of your cover boards. Sand the board to remove any burrs from cutting.
on the boards in the center of the book cloth and apply glue to the first board. Flip it over and press it down. Apply pressure from the cloth side to press out any air bubbles. Brush glue onto the spine next. I'm using a jig constructed from two thicknesses of scrap book board wrapped in the same cloth I'm using for the cover. This jig spaces the hinge properly lining the spine parallel to the cover piece and giving the hinge enough space to open and close the book. I'm also using a ruler to register the tail of the spine in line with the tail of the cover. Trim the edges of the turnins with a knife and ruler. I'm using another homemade jig to trim the corners at a 45 degree angle and spaced sufficiently to account for covering the thickness of the corner. It has to be at least one board thickness away. My final jig is four strips of scrap bookboard glued together. This jig spaces the next cut, called the tuxedo cut, sufficiently from the head and tail. Dry fold the flaps in preparation for gluing. Apply glue to the four edge flaps first and turn them in, being careful to pull and press tightly over the board. Pinch the tab at each corner down with a fingernail or bone folder. The bone folder is a great tool for applying pressure to the glue bond. PVA, once bonded, is not reversible. Be careful to use the right amount of glue. Too much will squeeze out and cause quite a mess. I sure like this glue bot for dispensing glue.
the bone folder to burnish the book cloth into the creases of the hinge. Pay special attention to the seams on the corners. Press them firmly down. Dry fit the book into the cover and inspect it. If it meets with your approval, proceed. If not, note the adjustments you need to pursue and make a new cover. The back cover will have an end sheet covering the book board, whereas the front cover will be open, so the liner has to extend fully over the inside of the front cover, as well as the spine, and a little onto the back cover. For books attaching to both covers, a liner covering the spine and about an inch on either cover should suffice. Apply glue to the paper side of the liner and carefully register it to the inside of the cover. your way over into the first gutter using a bone folder to shape the liner to the contours of the hinge. Press the liner down to the spine, then across the second hinge, and finally onto the back cover. making a concertina style end sheet out of some sturdy text weight paper to attach to the back of the last page and to the inside of the back cover. This will allow the last page to float freely without being stressed by the hinge of the cover. The end sheet should measure the same height as the back page. The 
width should be twice the width of one page plus an inch. My pages are 5 inches wide, so my end sheet will measure 11 inches wide. I'm scoring a line 5 inches in from the edge, another 1 half inch from there, and yet another 1 half inch in. Apply glue to the outside of one page of the end sheet. Carefully press it down to the back of the text block, making sure to align the spine of the end sheet with the spine of the text block. Dry fit the text block into the cover and gently open the book upside down so the end sheet is facing up. Carefully brush glue onto the end sheet. Gently close the book and press. Flip it over, open it up, and burnish the end sheet down with a bone folder. While the glue is still fresh, press the book. Leave it in for at least an hour. Do not apply pressure to the spine. It's always satisfying to me to take the book out of the press and inspect it for the first time. I really love how this book pages through like a normal book, but it can also open up and be displayed in full, either as a cascading kind of book that's sitting on its tail, or as a book that's opened up flat once again.